Hi there, this is James Tripp. Welcome to this video, which is on the precision elicitation of hypnotic phenomena. The precision elicitation of hypnotic phenomena. Now I'm making this video because I am running a weekend intensive on this very thing in Edinburgh, uh, in Scotland, in the UK, on the 4th and 5th of March. Now you can find some details somewhere around this video about that, but whether or not you intend to come on the training, this video is, uh, likely to contain some very useful information or perspectives for you. It may even completely flip your conceptions about hypnosis on their head. Depending on where you're at at the moment, they may just, it may just turn everything over and you go, whoa, uh, I hadn't thought about it like that before. And uh, if it does, that's great, that's good, because what I wanna do with this video is point you in the direction of being a better hypnotist, a more precise hypnotist, a more consistently effective hypnotist, um, and I think, you know, I've been talking about this for a long time, but one of the single biggest things that holds people back from being the very best hypnotist they can be is a complete misunderstanding of how hypnosis works, which leaves them kind of looking in the wrong place and pulling the wrong levers or, you know, pulling some of the right levers, but they're, they're grabbing blindly and they're getting lucky or they're, they're getting not so lucky because of a misunderstanding about how hypnosis works. Now, I want to just say um, the precision elicitation of hypnotic phenomena, being able to do this classic hypnotic phenomena, what are sometimes called deep trance phenomena, but that's misleading. Uh, we're talking about things like uh, amnesias or catalepsies, uh, rigidity, uh, hallucinations, time distortions, all of these sorts of things, these classic, what are often called deep trance phenomena. Being able to elicit these, I think, is the uh, the paragon of hypnosis. It's the, the holy grail of hypnosis. When you can do this efficiently and effectively, I think that you uh, have the absolute entitlement to feel proud that you are a highly skilled hypnotist. And you know what? There's not actually a lot of people out there that can. The vast majority of hypnotists out there are people who have gone through a hypnotherapy school, they've learned a lot about uh, trance inductions, and they've learned a lot about change work processes. Some schools only unfortunately teach script reading, but some go a little bit deeper into understanding human beings, how they work, learning, changing, growing, all of this. Very, very valid stuff. And there's a line of argument that says, well, you know, we don't need this hypnotic phenomena stuff. It's silly stuff, it's peripheral, it's not really necessary for change work. And um, I absolutely agree 100% that it is not necessary for doing good quality change work. However, that doesn't mean that it isn't useful in doing good quality change work. It doesn't mean that it doesn't offer you a whole bunch of tools and, and useful cool bits and pieces that you can utilize effectively in helping your clients make changes because that's exactly what you get from uh, hypnotic phenomena work and beyond that, the skill set and the understanding required to do precision elicitations of hypnotic phenomena just make you better at using language and communication to direct attention, lead cognition, and seed ideas for the purpose of shifting the experience of your clients effectively and efficiently. If you can get a hand stick effectively and efficiently, you're gonna be exquisitely better at getting the kind of mind shifts that are gonna support your clients therapeutically as well. This is why I'm such a big fan of phenomena work. Even if you rarely use it, having the skill to do it will upgrade your hypnosis skills hugely. Now, most of the time, most professionally trained hypnotherapists stay well away from hypnotic phenomena elicitation. And one of the reasons is, as I've mentioned, many schools don't teach that because they say it's not necessary. Another reason is, if you are operating by the old trance model of hypnosis, you are not gonna be very much in control. You're not gonna have your hands on the controls because you're gonna be looking in the wrong place. You're not even gonna be looking at the control panel because the trance model of hypnosis has us look in the wrong place. Now I wanna uh, say something about this old 
trance model of hypnosis. Why it's wrong, forgive me for saying this, incorrect, it's, it's demonstrably uh, incorrect and, um, and it also uh, undermines us as, as hypnotists. And before I do so this, I'm aware that some people are going to be very attached to this model and this could be seen as an upsetting thing. But what I'm going to say is, okay, I've just said the trance model is demonstrably wrong. It is so unnuanced. It kind of points in the right direction in some ways, but it's so unnuanced. It, it's like we've got mittens on when we're trying to use the, uh, the, the fine controls that we need to operate by. So it, it doesn't serve us in that way. I'm running a training in Brazil this year and the organizer of that training said, can we not mention the no trance thing because it upsets people. They don't like the magic being taken away. What I'm gonna say here is there's been a lot of research done into hypnosis uh, over the last uh, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, even more, um, that quite powerfully and clearly validates and demonstrates that hypnosis is a real thing, a real and tangible thing, and that it is an extremely useful thing. And there's a lot of understanding emerging about how specifically it works. And rather than being about putting people into special states, really hypnosis is more about the engagement of the cognitive faculties that we are using to shape our experience in every moment of every day anyway. So it is powerful stuff, but it's not really about some special state. It's more about everyday cognitive processes. And as a skilled hypnotist, how we uh, co-opt those everyday processes to create shifts in experience for our clients that serve them in realizing the differences they want to realize in their life. Okay, so to say there's no trance in, in the classic sense, um, and I'll get a little, more, a little bit more detail there in a moment, is not to say that hypnosis isn't a magical and powerful thing. It is a magical and powerful use of our everyday reality shaping faculties, if you like. So, um, so I want to say this ahead of time because I'm about to uh, call out what I call the trance myth, um, but I'm not calling out hypnosis. I want to make that absolutely clear. I'm not calling out hypnosis. I'm calling out a simple and slightly off model of how hypnosis works. So the classic trance model of hypnosis is simply this. In order to get deep trance phenomena, we have to put somebody into this special state called trance or hypnosis. It's a special signature state that renders them somehow unusually open to suggestion. Because they are in this state, their mind opens up to suggestions in such a way that those suggestions become realities for them. Now, I discovered for myself that this was not the case some years ago. Um, and I discovered within the context of street hypnosis. I was a hypnotherapist. I never really did hypnotic phenomena. I started playing around with them. And I decided I was going to go out and do street hypnosis. I used to go out in Covent Garden and uh, Leicester Square and sometimes on the south bank of the Thames and do street hypnosis because I wanted to explore what was possible. I wanted to go into a context that was challenging for me, um, not people who had self-elected to come in and, and do hypnotherapy with me, but just go out there in the world and explore with this stuff with people out there who were not pre-framed, who were not primed, who had not self-selected. So I was putting myself in a, a challenging situation, going by the old adage, uh, calm seas do not make for great sailors. And I learned a lot from doing that. And one of the things that became very quickly apparent to me was that classic deep trance phenomena had nothing to do with deep trance, not the way I'd been taught. And the reason I discovered this is I could do trance inductions and get people into a deep trance and see all the classic trance analogues I've been trained to look for. And then I'd go to get the deep trance phenomena and nothing would happen. But on other occasions, I'd just go straight for the deep trance phenomena, deep trance phenomena. No induction, nothing. And get the phenomena happening with the person, get the phenomenon happening with the person. And, um, and uh, there would be no trance analogues. You know, they, they will be laughing. I've got a video up on my website 
uh, of a girl at a music festival. She's got a card stuck in her hand. She's laughing. There's no trance analogue. She's not there all zonked out. Card, fully stuck in her hand. So I learned for myself by my own experience there was no correlation. Now, little did I know at the time that there were researchers out there in the world of academia who'd also discovered the same thing. And I'm kind of glad that I found it through my own um, flailing around in the dark rather than going out uh, and, and reading their stuff because it was a more generative way to discover that for me. But through my own discoveries, um, aside from what those researchers have discovered, I shifted across from a state-based model to a process-based model of hypnosis. And I created a model called the hypnotic loop, which a lot of people have found very, very useful. I don't need to go into that there. But the point of the matter is, is when you start looking at hypnosis as a process, when you start looking at it as a real-time engagement of people's cognitive faculties, and you start being really clear about where you want to nudge that system next, you can get super, super precise and super, super consistent in bringing people from where they are into the reality that you are looking to co-create with them. Now, whether you do hypnotic phenomena work or whether you just do change, I say just do change work, you know, that's the bigger part of it. Whether you do change work with people, it's being able to get, engage people in this hypnotic way with this understanding of how it works so as you can be making precision adjustments in the moment that are moving people constantly towards where they need to be in order to experience what they need to experience. You understand all the variables the things that need to be in place for them to experience that. And you um, elicit an engagement with that from the client with absolute precision. This is what I'm talking about doing. This is what I'm talking about doing. Now contrast this with the old way of eliciting hypnotic phenomena based on the what I call the trance myth. You can put somebody into the trance and you can see the trance analogues. You go for the phenomenon that you want to go for, you give the suggestion, and it doesn't happen. What do you do? Well, the classic response is, well, I didn't deepen them enough. So you go back and you put them in the trance, and then you come out, then you, you go for the suggestion again. It doesn't quite take, and there's a reason, because the things have nothing to do with each other. They have nothing to do with each other. Now, I actually sometimes talk about things in terms of trances. But what I'm saying is there is an a special state called trance. We live our lives through trances every moment. You know, some, somebody might have uh, uh, a clarity trance. Somebody else might have an anxiety trance in a moment or an anger trance, a rage trance, whatever. We respond to each moment in our life through a narrow reality tunnel, a cognitive construct that shapes our experience as it is. We're not experiencing the world as it is. We're experiencing it through a kind of trance in the moment. So we live our life through a constantly shifting um, analog of trances, you know, from one thing to another, shifting states all the time. If we go for a classic hypnotic phenomena, let's talk about a hand stick because I've something I, I teach regularly. Um, if we go for that, that, the experience of the hand stuck is a particular and unique trance in and of itself. Now, if we go for a classic hypnotic trance, relaxed, trance analogues, breathing shifted, state shifted. That is a trance. I'm just saying it's not this special signature state called trance, it's just a trance. But it has nothing to do with this, you see. So if we just arbitrarily make a connection between this type of trance and that type of trance, which is what the classic trance model does, what we're kind of doing is sending somebody in that direction because we think we need to send them in that, that direction before we send them in that direction. So we end up making the work less efficient and, and more uh, hit and miss because we're just not, not really understanding what we're doing. So we send them in that direction, then we give a suggestion to go in that direction, and when it doesn't take, we send them further back in that direction. So this is how the classic trance model leads us astray. If we work on a process level, we understand that each experience is its own unique trance, and we want to create that. We want to take somebody from where they're at directly into that experience. We want to be able to monitor the process every step of the way, see when it's on course, see when it's off course, know where to, know where to nudge, know where to prod the system to 
shift somebody precisely towards that outcome, precisely into that outcome. When we know how to do that, we can make sure we are always headed in the right direction, not just blindly going, well, I do this thing and that's supposed to happen. Well, it hasn't happened, so I better do that thing more and do more deepeners. Okay, so this is why the classic model um, often leads us astray. So, if you are um, somebody who has been learning from Hypnosis Without Trance for a long time, you have any of the Hypnosis Without Trance home study materials, the Hypnosis Mastery Program, these kinds of things, what I'm saying here isn't exactly new. I mean, this is what Hypnosis Without Trance is all about. I've been teaching this for a long time. What this workshop is about is it's about my 2017 understanding of doing this. If you have the Hypnosis Mastery Program, and a lot of people still buy that and they absolutely love that because everything on it works. It's all solid, real, tried and tested stuff from the street. And it is pretty much a good representation of how I used to do things um, sort of eight to 10 years ago, I guess. You know, pretty, uh, is it that long ago now? Yeah, yeah about eight, eight to 10 years ago. Um, and what I do now isn't incongruent with that. I just understand a little bit more and I have a bit more precision in my work and there's a lot of things that I used to think were necessary that I now understand are not necessary. So I've kind of continued in the same direction but got more effective. But I haven't been teaching explicitly these upgraded understandings. I've been focusing on teaching hypnosis skills rather than teaching the understanding. So in this workshop that I'm running in Edinburgh, on the precision elicitation of hypnotic phenomena. Uh, I will still be teaching the skills like I have been on my hypnosis skills boot camps over the last few years, but I will also be teaching um, a more upgraded set of understandings compared to what I taught back in the day with the hypnosis mastery program and the no fail protocol and all of these things. So this is what's occurring on the uh, 4th and 5th of March, 2017. It's a weekend intensive, it's in Edinburgh Old Town, which is absolutely gorgeous. It's a phenomenal place. I love Edinburgh Old Town. Uh, it, it's like, you know, it's like Hogwarts on steroids and just sprawling out into this, uh, this huge kind of fantasy city. It's, it's an awesome place. I absolutely love it. Um, and, uh, and we're going to be getting deep in on this weekend intensive on the art the understanding, the skill set, the craft of eliciting uh, hypnotic phenomena, going directly for them, getting them with precision. And also, here's the important thing, being completely grounded in going for them. Completely grounded in going for them. So many people, so many hypnotists um, disrupt their efficacy through fear of failure. And there is no need to fear failure. There is no need to fear failure because you can always get powerful hypnotic responses. So long as you understand how hypnosis works and you can coach the right kind of engagement from the client, you can always get powerful hypnotic responses. Okay, where people fall short is they don't know how to coach the appropriate kind of engagement from the client. So they, they kind of go through the motions of doing what they think they should do and the client either engages or they, they don't. And, and it's difficult to spot when they are or where they are sometimes until it's too late and you go and suggest, you know, go ahead, try and unstick that hand, find it sticks more solidly and, and it unsticks, you know. Um, so what I want for the people who attend this is not only to get the precision uh, skill sets and understandings, they need to be able to elicit the phenomena uh, that they want to elicit, but also the understanding that you cannot go wrong with this stuff, providing you understand what it is that you're doing. That doesn't mean you can mind control people, by the way, but it does mean that you can always get useful, effective things happening, um, providing the uh, client is willing to follow your directions and engage. Okay, that's, that's the provision because you can't, hypnotize somebody who wants to walk out the door, who wants to stick their fingers in their ears and go, la, 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 I'm not listening. You, you, know, you can't work with that level of explicit overt resistance. Um, 
but providing you understand what kind of engagement is required, how to coach that, and that person's up for that engagement, you can get to a place where you can get cool stuff happening consistently and with precision, and that's exactly what we're talking about. Okay, so I'd love to have you uh, attend. If uh, it's Edinburgh is an international city, obviously, you know, when I run the trainings in London, people fly in from all over Europe. Edinburgh is exactly the same. You can fly in from all over Europe, all over the world. Uh, we're in the old town, absolutely wonderful place to be. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to put an obscenely good, because I'm putting this out at really short notice. You know, often I'll have a longer run in um, on a training, but I'm putting this out at obscenely short notice. So what I'm going to do is for one week only, I'm going to put a ridiculous uh, discount on it for one week only. So up until the, I think, let's say the 7th of February, up until the 7th of February, you'll be able to get on this weekend intensive for only £250 rather than the 397 which is my standard weekend workshop price in the UK, and that's what this will be after the 7th. So when you see this video, if you wanna get on this, you wanna check and go, yeah, I can get to Edinburgh, or maybe you already uh, live in Edinburgh, or in, in Scotland, you're nearby, and you wanna get on this, uh, jump in, get that place at that exquisite discount, and I'm very much looking forward to meeting you there. If you have any questions in the meantime, please make use of the comments section on this information page. Take care.